Okay, about the simplest circuit you can hook up would be an LED. So let's go ahead and do that. I've calculated a value of resistance for this resistor, and we'll talk about how that's done in a, a little bit. So I'm hooking the one end of the resistor to the positive terminal of my breadboard, and I'm going to hook the other side of the resistor across the gap here. This gap means that there's no connection between these sets of holes on the top and these sets of holes in the bottom. And that's so you can get an integrated circuit on there and not short the integrated circuit leads out. So we've got our resistor in place. One end of the resistor to positive. We'll show you the schematic. One end of the resistor to the negative. Now we're going to hook up an LED. And this is a green LED. And it's one way to tell which part of the LED is the cathode or the side that goes to negative is to look and notice that there's a large piece of metal inside the LED if it's clear and you can see this that's usually the cathode another way to tell is that the shorter lead on the LED is sometimes the cathode now if you've already clipped these there's no way to use that to your advantage to tell which sides cathode or anode Another way to tell is that there's a flat side typically on the LED, and you can see it here. Not all LEDs have that either. So the best way to tell, I find, is just to look for that big, large chunk of metal, which is the base of the LED, and that's always for the negative. Um, I haven't seen any exceptions to that. And that's one way to tell. And of course, if you still can't tell, you can always just test the LED and see. So we're going to plug the LED in here. Notice what I've done. I've hooked the, I'm going to turn it sideways so it doesn't blind the camera. I've hooked the other terminal of the LED right down here in line with the resistor here. And the other side is going to my ground. And I'll, I'll come out a little bit here. And previously I hooked up my negative terminal here and my positive terminal up here and I even put some hot glue dabs up here to hold these terminals in place so that they don't easily get pulled out. Now ordinarily you wouldn't hook up a circuit with the power hooked up. That's what I did here but I did that for dramatic effects so that you could see the LED come on. And so this is a very bright green LED. Most LEDs nowadays are coming in clear packages I've noticed and they're extremely bright this is a super bright LED in green so this is the way to hook up a one of the simplest circuits you can hook up later on we'll use transistors and other devices and integrated circuits on breadboards I've got a set of rules that I have people follow for breadboarding that helps keep things moving along and uh, minimizes the the problems you can have when you breadboard a circuit. And as I said earlier, I like to use a battery for all my breadboarding circuits. For one thing, it makes the, the whole breadboard portable. Uh, and it's always nice to have a, a board that you can just pick up and take with you to wherever you want to go. We're going to talk about how to figure out the resistor value for a current limiting resistor in an LED circuit. The method I use is I just simply divide my power supply voltage by the maximum current I want through the LED and that's 30 milliamps. Most of these 5 millimeter, millimeter LEDs have a 30 milliamp max. Now if you do this, in this particular case, you'll have 9 volts divided by 0 0.03 amps. Make sure you convert that to amps. If you keep this in milliamps, your answer is going to be in K and kilo ohms. And you should come up with 300 ohms. Now this is a safe value. The lowest value you'd want to have. But there's a couple of things that are working in your favor anyway. A lot of people will tell you to take your um, your V applied, your V power supply minus 
V forward for the LED and divide that by whatever current you want from the LED. So if you wanted 30 milliamps, you divide that by 0 0.03 amps and that would give you the value. Well, you can use this if, uh, if you want, but as I said in the earlier video, finding the resistance value for an LED is not rocket science. You, you don't have to uh, nail this down and your chances of finding a resistor value that's exactly what you're going to come up with with this calculation are pretty slim. So what I've done here is I'm basically saying this is the max or the, the minimum value that you can have. Okay, 300 ohm minimum. The closest value that you'll find in your junk box usually is 330 ohms. So you can just say use 330 ohms and that'll put your current really much lower than 30 milliamps because what you didn't do in this calculation is you didn't include the difference between the power supply voltage and the forward voltage for the LED. For a green LED that could be 4 volts. So green can be anywhere from uh, 2 volts to 4 volts roughly. Um, the average is 3 volts. So if you included that in this calculation you'd have 6 volts divided by 0 0.03 amps. This would have been 200 ohms. 6 volts divided by 3. So we picked a min value, a minimum value that keeps us in a safe region. And keep in mind when you use LEDs that the higher the current is that you run through the LED, the less the life of the LED is going to be. If you're using a 9 volt power supply, you can use anything from 330 um, ohms, and we're talking about standard values here, to 1K. It's fine. You'll get light at 1K. It won't be as bright. Um, don't go any less than about 330. Definitely don't go less than 300. So this is a good idea for a range. Um, 330 is one of the values that I, I use a lot. Um, typical values are um, 330, 470. And this is all assuming a 9 volt battery. If you're using less than 9 volts, then you're, you're going to be more than safe. And any other values that you can find, these two are the are the uh, the most common values that I find in my junk box so I use these